Hey everyone, welcome to uh, yet another video for the uh, Market Failure series. I've been trying to update my Market Failure playlist uh, so that it matches the new syllabus a little bit better. Uh, before I continue, please like, share, subscribe, consider becoming a member of this channel to access lots of exclusive content like exam style questions, sample IAs, just exclusive content that's designed for people who want to support this channel. You can also support this channel by buying me a coffee. Again, all the links are in the video description below. So today's video is about the free rider problem. So in the past few videos, I've been talking about how externalities, whether they are positive or negative externalities, can be a cause of market failure. The free rider problem is another cause of market failure. This is associated with a class of goods that we call public goods. Public goods are prone or subject to the free rider problem because of the combination of two characteristics. What are those two characteristics? Number one, they are non-excludable. So non-excludability means it's difficult to exclude people from benefiting from the good or service. And they are non-rivalrous in consumption. This non-rivalry means that one person's consumption does not leave less for everybody else. So examples of um, public goods are written here. So street lights. Again, if I stand under a street light, it's very difficult to exclude people from benefiting from the light that is provided. And if I stand under a street light, it doesn't leave less light for everybody else. Lighthouses, national defense, radio broadcasts, off the air television broadcasts. These are all public goods. Now, remember with radio broadcasts and off the air television broadcasts, when they capture enough people's attention, they can sell that attention to advertisers. But radio broadcasts that are on the air, again, it's difficult to exclude people. And um, one person's, you know, tuning into a broadcast doesn't leave less for everybody else. So these are all examples of public goods. Now, where's the problem? Well, the free market in the absence of government intervention will generally not provide public goods due to this free rider problem. So, so the cause of the market failure here is the free rider problem. What's the cause of the free rider problem? It's the non-excludability and the non-rivalry as characteristics of these public goods. Now, remember... Public goods generate positive externalities, but we do not need to represent them diagrammatically according to this new IB economic syllabus. So there is really no diagram for public goods. However, there was a textbook that I kind of liked um, this idea. So think of public goods as merit goods because they generate positive externalities of consumption. But remember that not all merit goods are public goods. So all public goods are merit goods, but not all merit goods are public goods. A very common misconception is um, public schools or public hospitals. People see the word public and they're like, oh, it must be a public good. No, a public school or a public hospital is a merit good, but public schools are excludable and they're rivalrous. For example, here in the United States, you can't just go to any public school. You have to be living in the zip code or in the area. So that's one way of excluding people. Also, if you take a seat in a classroom, that's less seats or less of the teacher's attention available for everybody else. So remember, public schools and public hospitals are public because they're provided by the public sector, but that does not make them public goods. All public goods are merit goods, like street lights. Uh, lighthouses, national defense, but not all merit goods are public goods. Okay, uh, Fabio. So how can the government, how can the government correct this market failure due to the free rider problem? The government can step in and directly provide the um, good or service, the public good, or the government can contract it out to the private sector, find a private sector firm and sign a contract that the private sector firm uh, would provide this uh, good or service and maintain it and look after it. And the government basically picks up the expense. But both come at a very high opportunity cost. So the government has to really weigh the benefits against the potential costs and both require justifying these expenses to taxpayers. We're talking especially in democracies, right? Remember, governments, their main source of revenue is taxes, right? So any sort of expense that the government spends will 
entail an opportunity to cost and requires some form of justification to taxpayers. Okay, so in this video, I reviewed, again, the free rider problem, which is often a result um, of two characteristics, non-excludability and non-rivalry, and it's associated with public goods. Public goods generate positive externalities, but we don't really have a diagram for them. Um, the free market, when there is no government intervention, will generally not provide these public goods because of the free rider problem. And I talked about how direct provision and contracting out to the private sector can be two um, sort of interventions that the government can use to correct market failure due to the free rider problem. Again, like, share, subscribe, uh, join the channel, become a member, support the channel, buy me a coffee, um, and just, you know, have a great week. I hope you're enjoying this content. Um, I love creating this content and I love sharing uh, my knowledge and my passion for IB economics with everybody. Have a great rest of your week. Bye.